America. Uh, head coach Lon Kruger last year, one of the youngest teams. This year, one of the most veteran teams, and they're playing a totally different type of basketball without Trey Young, much more defensive oriented, which is more like Lon Kruger's MO. Yeah, toughness um, of the power conference teams. They are the most experienced team in the power conferences. Six seniors, and Mike Boynton, a youngster from uh, relative to Von Kruger, I might add, from Brooklyn, New York, played at South Carolina, did a magnificent job a year ago. But they have, uh, they've had a little adversity, Mark, and they're overcoming that. Yeah, a week ago today, let go three players. So on Thursday of last week, they had walk-on tryouts. 49 individuals showed up. They kept six who are on the basically the practice squad right now. There's a possibility that a manager may make the team at some point. But uh, it, it's a team that's having to overcome some adversity in numbers. And they're going to take on their big rival tonight. Ball in the air. We are underway. It's Oklahoma in the Crimson Red that has the first possession. Freshman Jamal Bienemy in the starting lineup. First play. James has that blocked by Cam McGriff. Yeah, two freshmen for the Cowboys. And the guy with the ball has had a good year, likely. Two freshmen matching up, in fact. Likely one of the freshman starters. Facing up another one of the freshmen. Off for an A. The enemy getting a start for the second straight game for the Sooners. He made his starting debut against Texas on Saturday. Quick pass. Richard Odoms has that blocked by Ine. I saw Ine get six blocks against Memphis in Orlando in November. And this kid's got a lot of potential, especially on that end of the floor. They feed the pass to Waters, gives it up, and Ine lays it in and is fouled. Great energy to start. Watch Lindy Waters now. He's going to cut to the basket, post up, brings the help. And then the freshman from Kansas City, he's excited that he should be. Well, Lene finishes the three point play, but kudos to Waters for corralling what was a really low, tough entry pass. Yes. So it's the Cowboys with the game's first points. Quick pass, Odoms. Richard Odoms has kind of found a resurgence here the last couple of games and back in the starting lineup. Yeah, 17 1 and 11 to last. And he's another one of those guys like James that has Final Four experience. Waters, tough shot, defended by Manning. But Lindy Waters basically can shoot anytime he wants on this team. That's right. And that's what Mike Boynton told us today. They need him to get shots up. And that's some, that means sometimes. Maybe forcing some, but that's okay given the shorthanded nature of the roster. Manic switches that three. Well, if they can get Brady Manic shot to fall, we might have a high scoring game tonight. The back cut, the bounce pass, and a foul. I'm going to get Doolittle on that. Or was that just kicked? Tipped out of bounds. Well, the Norman North High School product, Lindsey Waters. Yeah, he's been on fire lately. And then how about Brady Manick? These guys grew up not far from each other, probably about 20, 30 minutes. Of course, you mentioned Lindsey from Norman and uh, Brady from the outskirts, suburbs of Oklahoma City. Waters from about the same spot. Well, first of all, I absolutely love the energy of Oklahoma State. And there's a great little down screen. Squares himself. He gets behind the ball before he catches it. Knocks it down. And uh, this is a guy that not only shoots the ball from deep well. Look at the free throws. He's on a 15-game streak, a 15-free throw streak right now. Definitely foot was on the line. So it was a two-point shot. As you mentioned, leading the nation in free throw shooting, trying to become the second Cowboy in three years as Phil Forte led the nation 
in free throw shooting a couple of years ago for the Cowboys. Well, I like, I like the energy of both teams. And when you're Oklahoma be playing against this defense, you're going to have to back cut some. That's the fourth back cut. Bounces off the back rim. Desagua feeds likely. And they've taken advantage of Oklahoma State's pressure and denial. And uh, in theory, it's been good. Not in practice necessarily so far. Waters again. That's a three. And Lindy Waters the third. Off to a smoking hot start tonight. Eight early points for Waters. James trying to answer from the corner, but it's short. Rebounded off the floor by McGriff. We got two teams tonight, Fran, that are playing like a couple of teams that have lost two in a row in the Big 12 Absolutely. with a sense of urgency. Yep, no question about it. Likely trying to cross over. Good defense by Christian Doolittle. McGriff tried to get in the lane, but that was closed up. And likely hits the three, and the three ball falling for the Cowboys. A 9-0 run for Oklahoma State. That's only his fourth three of the season. And 13 three-point attempt. Deep three. Short for Manic. Here's Dezagua. Quickly into the corner for McGriff. Waters doubled in the corner, skips it. Dezagua open, likely a three. That one a little bit long. Tip kept alive by McGriff. Out of bounds. Who are they going to say it's off? Manic, Oklahoma State ball. But what a start for Lindy Waters. Inspired. Absolutely inspired to start. And this guy's got this crowd going. Lindy Waters grew up in Norman. He's playing in Stillwater. You don't think this rivalry means a little more? It up here to Stillwater. It's off the bus in Stillwater. And they've been uh, rudely greeted so far here on the floor. As uh, OU 2 of 7 from the field to start the game. OSU 5 of 7. And the energy in this building is electric. I thought Oklahoma came out with great energy. A couple block shots at the rim by Ane and by McGriff. And they can't give up Oklahoma on attacking that basket, but they've got to do a good job here on this end because Cowboys sizzling so far. Five assists on their five field goals. Waters, a 12-0 run for Oklahoma State in the last two and a half minutes. This is exactly what Mike Boynton told us today. He told Lindy Waters, if you don't get shots up with this team, you're actually hurting us by being unselfish. And he's taking that talk to heart. Yeah, Coach Boynton even said, hey, Lindy, if you're only two of six in a game, that's not enough. That's right. You gotta shoot more. I'd rather you be nine, nine of 23 yeah. and get us points. And they picked up his first foul for the Cowboys. And he goes to his own. Yeah, 2 3 zone. How much of this is the personnel depletion? Just try to save. Save, save legs, yes. change up. The enemy from 14 feet hits the floater. He's a good young player. We've seen it through the years. When Juan Kruger puts you into the starting lineup as a freshman, that really tells you all you need to know. McNeese chasing Waters. A Dezogwa three. I'm not sure that should have been a chance for a four-point play. He got whacked pretty good after the shot. It looked like it. It looked like it, but he stayed with it. And Dezogwa not quite the same. He actually told Jerry Pollard on this end of the floor, I think I got fouled, Mr. Official. But great concentration. Oklahoma State has hit four of their five three-point attempts to begin the game and lead by 13. Sooners have got to keep their poise and hope this shooting doesn't continue. In and out for Doolittle. 
And they have to keep attacking the basket, not settle for contested jump shots. They've been a little reluctant to go to the rim since those two early blocks. Seems that way. Waters got the enemy right in his grill. Cutting to the basket, they're great! Oh, what an athletic play to get that one to go through the hole. A 17-2 run. Timeout, OU. Gatorade studies the best athletes to create the most advanced range of sports fuel. Gatorade. You fuel us, we fuel you. Lindy Waters got Oklahoma State off to a hot start, and his fellow juniors have continued. Watch the concentration by DeZago knocking it down, and then Cameron McGriff, who is excellent around the rim, and they've got this arena absolutely on fire right now. These three juniors, no seniors on this team, so they're going to have to carry these Cowboys the rest of the way. Another changing defense, a little 1-3-1. That was kicked by McGriff. We were talking about the defenses in the zone with Mike Point, and he said, you know, we haven't brought out the box in one yet, the triangle in two, but we may at some oh, yeah. point if we have to. Listen, this guy had no head coaching experience a year ago and did a phenomenal job. Four wins over the top ten. And they're facing a little crisis right now. A travel by Doolittle before the three-point shot. You know, coaching, I always tell young coaches, when, nothing, when nothing's wrong, it's still chaos management. But when you have an adversity hit you, like the suspensions, it becomes crisis management. And that's how you're judged as a coach, how you handle chaos and crisis. And this guy is built for it. He's very poised for his age and his experience as a head coach. Open look, McGriff. The enemy rebound. Just the second three-point miss and six tries for the Cowboys. That's a three off the right side from James. And it's the guard likely pulling down the rebound. They got to start attacking the basket again. I just don't think the way this Oklahoma team shoots it in the Big 12, 29%, they can live with that. From a tough angle, Ane on that pass over the top kind of got stuck on the baseline and throws it away. You know, the Big 12 had so much success in the non-conference. And five or six of those teams have been ranked in the defensive numbers, the efficiency charts. Now that we're watching Big 12 basketball, Oklahoma's an outstanding defensive team, as is Iowa State, Kansas, Texas Tech, Kansas State. In this league right now, with the amount of good defenses, Mark, you have to figure out ways to score. You can't, it's not the non-conference. You're not playing Northwestern. You're playing teams that know you well. Every team has to deal with that, but perhaps Texas Tech is the team most amplified right now that was really rolling and now struggling to score. They've lost a couple in a row. You know, they've lost a couple in a row, but you've got to have amnesia. It's just as easily they can go and win five in a row. It's that kind of lead. Duncan DeMuth in the game, picked up the foul. Puts Jamani McNeese at the line, who has scuffled from the line this year. Just 35%, but he sinks the first. With the Big 12 standings to the K-State win last night. They're tied with KU. How about Baylor, though? Amazing. Great start. I'm a huge fan of Tristan Clark, uh, the young man who got hurt in the Iowa State game. I think he's going to have surgery this week or next, so we wish him well. But Scott Drew has rallied the troops. They've become perimeter-oriented. And Makai Mason, the, Iowa, the uh, Yale transfer, has been outstanding. Three McGriff. 
the outside shots falling right now for Oklahoma State to open up a 25 to 9 lead skipped into the corner Kalixti once again settling for that outside shot sometimes you don't even realize you're doing it but you got to think that the early shot blocking at the rim has maybe played into the minds of the Sooners with the 6-10 and eyes on the bench, you think this is your time to go inside if you're absolutely the Sooners offense. Five to shoot. Waters clears a little space. Wow! There's a guy that plays in Oklahoma City that's got that rocker step down pretty good. He's in New York tonight, lighting it up. But how about this guy? Brook esque under 11 minutes and it's been a 23 to 4 run manic a three from the corner McNeese tips it to James three left corner good the enemy that kid's got poise he took the final shot at Texas after knocking down three threes down the stretch to get him back and he does not Fear the moment. He did that with no hesitation no, in Austin. I still want them to go inside. If it were me, we'd be playing from the rim out. Curtis Jones steps up and bounces out. Rebound skips to the enemy. There's a lot of time left, Mark. Oklahoma just they have to just go possession by possession. Kalixti. Not sure if he was trying to lob it to McNeese or shoot it, but Manic gets the shot to fall and the foul. So a chance for a three-point play for Manic when we come back from the timeout. Blue Bloods, number nine, Kansas. Number eight, Kentucky. Saturday at six on ESPN. Well, Trey Young and Lindy Waters, high school teammates at Norman North. Of course, Trey Young went to OU and Lindy Waters here at Oklahoma State. The meeting last year between these two schools was an exciting one. But so far tonight, Lindy Waters has found his three point shot. Absolutely. His former teammate, Trey Young, dropped in 48 last year. And Lindy Waters got 14 tonight. Three of three from deep, five of five from the field. And it's exactly what uh, Mike Boynton. Told him he needed from him, not just the made shots, but the aggressiveness. Manic completes the three-point play out of the timeout. By the way, as you remember, Mark, Oklahoma State won that game last year in overtime. 83-81 in OT, as you mentioned, 48 for Trey Young, most points ever for a score in the Bedlam series, breaking Jawan Evans, 42 points, and he scored in Norman a few years prior to that. I mentioned earlier, a lot of time in this game. What I mean by that is, you just don't expect Oklahoma State to keep scoring or shooting at this level. So you have to tighten up your defense if you're the Sooners and play possession by possession. Well, Oklahoma State had hit 10 of their first 14 shots Ooh. prior to that last miss. There's a Manic three from the left corner. They've got Christian Doodle in there now against DeMuth. DeMuth. Uh, crashed into Doolittle and then Manic thought he had a block and he's called for the foul. Well, number nine, Kansas will battle number eight, Kentucky at Rupp Arena in the sixth annual SEC Big 12 Challenge. That's also a Sonic blockbuster Saturday, 6 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. The SEC Big 12 Challenge presented by Continental. Just buckle in for all that action on Saturday. It starts at noon Eastern. You'll be in Oxford. I'll be uh, Iowa State and at Ole Miss uh, be, with Chris Patola. You'll be down at Texas A&M. Kansas State's down there to play the Aggies. And that, that Kansas-Kentucky game, an outstanding game. Two great programs, great Hall of Fame coaches. Jayhawks. I was going to say, Jayhawks have had the better of it last couple years, but this is a really good Kentucky team playing well right now. Way off the right side with that from DeMuth. And there's some of the challenge games that you'll see on Saturday. A block by McGriff. That shot barely made it out of the hand.
Hand off to McGriff. Shoots over Doolittle. It bounces out. Offensive rebound to Muth. New clock. Good job by McGriff pulling it out. Likely gets right by James. But Doolittle was there to protect the rim. Excellent defense by Doolittle. Put his hand straight to the ceiling. Kalixty three from the corner. I don't know about you, but I think they're shooting too many threes. Yes. But hey, Mike Boyne's not arguing. This, this team shoots the Sooners 29% behind the arc in Big 12 play, so he's liking that. Curtis Jones, the transfer from Indiana. Likely. McGriff. That bounces in and out, but DeMuth goes over the back of Doolittle for the foul. Timeout here in Stillwater. What a hot shooting start for the Cowboys. They lead it by 13. Well, Fran Fraschilla certainly puts up the frequent flyer miles. He's seen seven of the 10 teams in the conference in the last five days, all of them in the last 11. Saturday was in Morgantown for West Virginia's late rally to beat KU. Saw Kansas rally to beat Iowa State. And then last night, Kansas stayed over Texas Tech and tonight enjoying a little bedlam. Yes, and uh, not a lot of frequent flyer miles because I drove uh, <laughs> from Manhattan today. I did, but there you see, these are my, this is a snapshot right now. This league is so tough, it changes from game to game, week to week. Who you playing next, home or away? And uh, right now, you got to love what, obviously, Kansas. No surprise there. K-State back on the groove. Defense has been outstanding. The enemy after the steal, a little floater up and good for Doolittle. Christian Doolittle is so important because he's starting to get the mojo back from his freshman year. And Lon Kruger has relied on him He's made some big shots in this season. And he's almost as important to this offense as Christian James is. Well, an 8-0 run for Oklahoma. He's now pulled them within 11. Oklahoma State has cooled off. They've missed their last six from the field after hitting 10 of their first 13 on the short clock. Deep three, not there that time for Waters. Yeah, that's why I said earlier, you, you watch basketball, you know it's a long game, and it's, it's going to be hard for the Cowboys to continue to shoot the way they did. Odoms, Doolittle in the lane, spinning and scoring. Nice dish, and good job by Doolittle. Little PhD right there off the glass. Proper hand development with the spin. So make it a 10-0 run for Oklahoma. And they now have whittled the deficit down to single digits and it's a little quieter in here isn't it definitely so that was quite an early buzz though yes it was seven to shoot Isaac likely the freshman jab steps and then travel yeah take a look right here Christian Doolittle he's got the little floater he'll make that foul line shot but he's really good going to the basket he grew up right in the middle of this bedlam rivalry in Edmond, Oklahoma Memorial High School, where he was one of the outstanding players in the state of Oklahoma. So he knows all about this rivalry, maybe more so than most of his teammates. Yeah, definitely so, out of Edmond Memorial High School. And as you mentioned, won a 6A state title when he was there at Edmond Memorial. In fact, he played with, remember Jordan Woodward, who was a great guard for OU. When Woodward was a senior. Doolittle was a, a freshman there at Edmond Memorial. Now, they were the two best players to ever play there. They're, the third guy was pretty good, too, Bill Self. And yeah. he, he knows all about this rivalry as well. But Bill was actually, at that time, they had it split up into the, the small school player of the year and big school player of the year, and he was the big school player of the year. I'm joking. Bill Self was an outstanding huh? Oklahoma State Cowboy. Went to the yeah. NCAA tournament in 1983, playing for Paul Hansen. Doolittle from 16, and it's skying for the rebound, Curtis Jones. But you see how Juan Kruger put the ball in his hands out of the timeout. McGriff. Wow. He can do that. What I like about it is he didn't even hesitate. He's had some really big games in his career. He's been a, 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 a Jayhawk killer on occasion. He's got eight points tonight. Doolittle from the foul line is fouled. 
Cameron Griff, only a junior out of Grand Prairie, Prairie in the mid cities in Dallas. So take a look at that. Knocks down a three ball. That's not his strength, but he's capable of making it, much like uh, Christian James. He's got a double double in four of his last seven games, McGriff. And they, by the way, picked up his second foul, so he has come out. So that 6'10 rim protector for Oklahoma State, a few foul issues here with five and a half minutes left in the first half. Oklahoma State with the ball in the 11 point lead. Oklahoma does a lot of switching in man to man. Sometimes you switch yourself into a mismatch. Right now, Manic guarding the Gazagua. Wow. That long three from Jones. And that foul is going against Oklahoma. And I believe the enemy. Officials are not calling the over the back as much this year because they're penalizing the defender for not only blocking out, which is a good play, but when you walk under an offensive player trying to get to the glass, they're going to call that a foul. So the enemy is checked out. Zagua able to inbounds just in time. Waters. There's that switch in the mismatch. This is what we're talking about. And then McGriff. And there's a perfect example of switching into a bad matchup. Well, our women's Thursday night showcase has number one Notre Dame in Knoxville to take on the Lady Falls. Seven Eastern on ESPN and the app, so you can watch it anywhere. And remember last year, the Irish staged that great comeback, their biggest in school history from 23 points down to beat Tennessee and South Bend. And how about the Vols tonight? The men, Rick Barnes' team, survived Vanderbilt in overtime in Nashville by five. They'll play West Virginia on Saturday. The Griff. How about that? 11 first half points for Cam McGriff. Well, maybe they can keep shooting like this, and if they do, it's lights out for the Sooners. Manic, that's a two. And Curtis Jones flies in to grab that rebound. Just terrific energy tonight by the Cowboys in the first 16 minutes. Jones gets it back from DeMuth. The three to Zagua. High off the back rim. Tipped out by McNeese on the run. Reynolds. Odoms in a crowd underneath. Manic one dribble and a stop. Nice job on Rashad Odoms. He got himself into traffic and was really under control. Manic stuck behind the defense. Really well done. They got that ball out of transition quickly. See the numbers for Manic. He's had pretty good numbers against Oklahoma State, averaging 15 a game four times coming in to this one. Odoms count it. And the foul. That's perfect two on one basketball. Great pass by Reynolds. Doesn't hold on to it. Gets it out ahead. Bounce pass. Finished by. Looking forward to that. Let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch. Your midseason top 25. Johnson for Kentucky. And how about Cedric Lawson? Amazing season so far. If I had a vote right now. I'd say he's the player of the year in the Big 12, and that doesn't take anything away from Jared Culver, Mario Shayok. I think those three guys are going to be in the mix. A lot of it will depend to me on who wins the league, but Diedrich Lawson has essentially been unguardable in Big 12 play. Odoms steals up ahead. Miles Reynolds to lay in. And that was almost an N1. Miles Reynolds is explosive going to the basket, and I think he had a point right there. And he was in the air, too, which is something they're trying to do this year. But if you know him, if you've officiated him this year, you know that he takes contact really well. But, hey, he finished it. Play on. Long three. Boom. Lindy Waters in and out. Rebound. McNeese had it. Gets it back. Saved it. Then 
For a moment, Reynolds had it, lost it, but here come the Sooners. It was a big stretch for the Cowboys. They've got to maintain at least a seven, eight point lead going into the half. Or they've squandered all of that emotion of the first 12 minutes or so of this game. Remember, Oklahoma has more depth. 15 footer short from Doolittle. McNeese there, though, to clean it up. Good footwork by McNeese. He got stuck underneath the basket. Good pivoting. Well, the Sooners hit only two of their first nine three point shots, Fran. Since that, they've gone back to more mid range and driving to the rim, and they've gone on a 9 0 run since. And they've chipped away, which is what you have to do when you get behind early. Zagua for to shoot from the short corner. It rolls off. Now the Cowboys have gone cold after a hot shooting start. They were up by as many as 19 at one point. That's been cut to five. McNeese spins with the left hand off the glass. Well, well done. They went to him purposely. Good set play by Juan Kruger. Little flex cut inside and opened up the post for McNeese. Good finish with the left hand. The comeback is about complete for Oklahoma as they go into the half. You know, one minute to play in this first half and a 19 point lead for the Cowboys is down to a one possession game. Dezagua blocked by McNeese. Seven on the shot clock as the Cowboys will inbounds. Nice have been bothered by that sprained ankle. He certainly seems like he's feeling like himself again. He got his bounce back. And the two graduate transfers have been key. Kalixti and Miles Reynolds. Shot clock at four. Jones got it. And all of a sudden, Oklahoma State really needed to hit a big shot and they get a three. Desperately. And that McNeese should have known to come out with the clock low and make him a driver. But he gave him a NBA rhythm three. About a six second difference shot clock and game clock. Little zone here. Three to shoot. Reynolds puts it up. Five seconds left. Doolittle gets it back. The jumper off the left side. One second, and that's going to do it. Oklahoma was down by as many as 19. Got it down to three, and they trail it by six. 37-31 here at the break. Well, the halftime report will begin after these messages. Dallin Cup, Sean Farnham in the studio. A fun first half. In Bedlam from Stillwater, it's the Popes by six. Six? Definitely. So it seemed like Oklahoma fell in love with a three-point shot at one point, got back to driving into the lane. What does Oklahoma State need to do to find that spark again? Poise. Poise, run their offense. Again, try to create good looks for Dezagua and Waters and, and Cameron Griff, the three juniors. Again, Oklahoma State never trailed, led by as many as 19. Saw that trim down to three late in the first half. And they'll have the ball to start the second half of the six-point lead. So off we go. Bedlam matchup. OU, OSU, half number two. Waters with three threes in the first half. He's going to shoot this. He didn't score over the last 11 15 of the first half. Comes out of the shoot and knocks it down to start the second half. You see him freeze dribble out there. When a shooter bounces it more than three or four times, he's just sizing up the defender for the right moment to get the release off. That's, that's a tell. Odoms. Stops. Gets it back from the enemy and launches the three. Good. What a shard Odoms. The last week or so has really been a big spark for Oklahoma. You know, it's amazing. He does not take a lot of threes, but he was three for six on the year. And that neutralized that first set play by 
Mike Boynton getting waters that open look. So that was just his seventh three-point attempt of the year, and his fourth made one. Gets him back within six. Likely driving. It fell off the left rim, punched out by Olams, goes out of bounds. It's going to be Oklahoma State ball. Yeah, watch this. I want you to watch Wendy Waters now. He's going to freeze dribble. Watch him now. He's got the mismatch. He's going to bounce, 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 looking for the rhythm. And all he needs is a little bit of space. Well done. Waters again defended by James. Hands off to Dezagua. Oh, great move. The grip. Yep. Odoms stripped him but committed the foul. When you run your offense out by the foul line, you have five guys out there. The grip, he just took off for the basket knowing there was no rim protection right there. It's one of those rare times when you anticipate a play like that that uh, Rashad Odom has got to force the ball to the elbow and the help and not to the baseline where he's more comfortable in that Oklahoma defense forcing it. Mike Boynton's Cowboys just eight scholarship players nine total players on the roster a week ago today let go Maurice Kalu Michael Weathers and Travis Jones all dismissed from the team for a violation behavior oriented off the court it goes out of bounds Oklahoma State ball thanks to the effort by McGriff well Mike Boynton changed his defense up once again came out in a 1 3 1 and when you don't have a great fastball or you don't want to exert, exert all that energy in the man to man defense changing your defenses is a way to just keep Oklahoma out of their rhythm. Lindy Waters started this game Fran like a guy who's from Norman Oklahoma and this game meant a little bit extra to yeah, start things. Absolutely. And again you got to guard him out there you got to turn him into a dribbler. Four to shoot to Zagua gets in the lane and trying to pull it a pass to a and it goes past him and out of bounds. That's not a pass that uh, a is going to catch Zagua trying to do the right thing but that's a. That ball went about 70 miles an hour. Yeah, that, was that, a, looked, that was a fast. Ball. That was a fast ball for mid close. There's that one three one again. You can get a lob out of this if you can get one of those guys on the baseline. You can't leave the enemy open. We're, we're learning you. quickly. He's a guy that if he spots up and you give him some room on the three point line, he'll knock it down. Early in the year, he wasn't shooting a lot of threes, but this guy's up over 40% now and playing with a lot of confidence. There's the switch. Now there's the mismatch. Likely got past Manic and rolls out. Tipped around to Odom's OU ball. Yeah, that switching defense has been really good for Oklahoma all season long. Odom's. Fires to the corner. Maddox spots up. Three. Got it. It's a two-point game in Stillwater. Uh, Rashad Odoms has done a great job tonight passing the basketball. He's a veteran. He knows what this game is about. Four years worth. This is as close as OU has been since the early moments of the game. Got a hold on Christian James. First foul on James. It's been a quiet offensive night for Christian James. He had scored well the last couple of games to break a kind of a, a, a shooting slump, but not a good shooting game for him so far tonight. Yeah, no points. That's that's really quiet. 20 points each of the last, that last two. They set the screen now rolls and trap him on the sideline and you, you see that motion there by referee Jerry Pollard he's saying that's called the cylinder the cylinder he broke the cylinder the freedom of movement rules now and that foul against Oklahoma as a result you have to give the offensive player room to maneuver and, and pivot and you can't take away his space you can't take away his ability to turn and Oklahoma fortunate there because if that wasn't called, that ball went off waters. 
Quick pass comes in to Ine, lays it in. He's a long drink of water. He's had some really good moments this season. And if he just continues to work, there's some good young big guys in the league. Been impressed with Kevin Samuel at TCU. Your Ine as well. Manic breaks through. It looked like he was going to pass out, and then he decided to spin towards the bucket. Well, when you double team a low post player like that, you got to create such a like a perpendicular. Uh, bo you know, your bodies have got to be perpendicular, so you can't allow the offensive player to split. Deep three, Desagua answering for the post. Back to a five-point lead for Oklahoma State. OU, though, has not missed a shot from the field. Four for four to start the second half. Now back to a little 1-1-3 one, one, zone. Mixing and matching. Falls into a 2-3. Doolittle. He's got bumped from the front and behind and is fouled. A timeout early second half. Pokes by five. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800 State Farm. Hi there. This is a commercial about insurance. But let's point scoring straight now at 21 games. He looks to keep it rolling when the Rockets score off against Kawhi and the Raptors. Coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7 Eastern on ESPN and on the ESPN app. He had 61 points tonight against the Knicks in the Garden. Check this out, but notice at the top, <laughs> when, every, when you start talking about getting into Will Chamberlain's neighborhood, that's still a really, really long ways away for all those great players listed below him. That's amazing. Will, Will the still. Yeah, that's not a graphic error, by the way. That's 515. 15. Guy averaged 50 points yeah. a game in one season. Doolittle from the line for the Sooners. Oklahoma hasn't missed a shot here in the second half. They've hit three threes, five overall field goals. Speaking of guys that had a great night from the line, how about Grant Williams? Perfect. In that win over uh, Vanderbilt, 23 for 23 from the foul line. Is that an NCAA record? It is not. It's, it's actually just short. No, and it's held by a guy that played here. And it's not Phil Forte. Arlen Clark back in 1959, Oklahoma State Cowboy. And he made uh, 24 in a row in a game, and that's the uh, all time record. Offensive foul on Waters, and I believe that's his third. That is indeed, and it comes just over five good. minutes into the half. A good solid defense. Watch the left arm now. Good position. Textbook charge right there by Miles Reynolds, who since he's joined this team as a graduate transfer, has been a vocal leader and a dirty work guy. You know what's interesting about Kalixti and, and Re Reynolds? Both of those guys have, have been really good college players in their day. Reynolds lost the handle and they saves it, but it's been an adjustment for them a little bit playing in the Big 12 Three to Zagua Boom. Shoots the arrow in the air and Every time Oklahoma gets close Cowboys have responded and that's the poise we talked about coming out of this game in the, in the second half gave away the big lead Wants to drive, and Ane has been absolutely terrific at the rim. And then this is just too much room. Transition three. Had a great talk with Thomas DeZagua today. Played at Tampa Catholic with Kevin Knox, who's now having a great rookie year. Wow. Brady Manick. We talked about that 1-3-1 one, one zone. If you can throw behind it on the backside, you can get that lob. But Thomas DeZagua, a basketball junkie. Dad was his high school coach. Kevin Knox, teammate. Likely just off the mark. DeZagua, by the way, was four for eight in three-point shooting in the first matchup this year with OU. He's four for five three-point shooting tonight. Reynolds on the drive, too strong. 
And the Zagwa rebound. He's going to run out with it. Gets it back for McGriff. Jones ran into Jamani McNeese, but there's a nay to kiss that in. Well, you got within two, but every time it looks like they make it over the hump. Oklahoma State's been able to come up with a big shot or two. That's Manic who is getting help to his feet. That's the reason for the stoppage in play. Let's go back and watch this play on the other end now. Watch the drive. Here comes McNeese. Uh, I, I wouldn't call that. It's a little bit of a flop. Good piece of officiating. I think they're going to go to the monitor and see how the contact occurred with Brady Maddock, who was holding his eye when he went down. So our officiating crew, Joe DeRosa, Jerry Pollard, Ray Natilli, going to go to the monitor and see if there's any kind of flagrant one or two to be assessed here. I didn't see it live. It was away from the ball. In the far corner. Jerry Pollard was the closest official to it, and he's the one that stopped play. There's this, the contact. Yeah, they don't have much because they, they're already putting that ball back in play. Yeah, that's nothing. Just an unfortunate accident, if you will. Wrong place, wrong time? Yeah. I think McGriff got him. He wasn't even looking at Maddox. He just stuck his right right arm out. So we resume a 14 on the shot clock for the Sooners. Got to go quick. They like do it at the top. And they like him to go one on one. James passes out of a triple team, but likely deflected it to Jones, who comes the other way and lays it in. If you're the enemy, you have to get back to the basket and stop the ball and not go for the block. Well done by Curtis Jones. This is exactly how the Cowboys needed to start this half. McNeese trying to back down to Muth, but there's McGriff to help out. They double, skip pass, Calixti. The enemy almost dragged that pivot foot. The crowd wanted to walk. Calixti bounces it down low. McNeese fouled. That's a good foul. Got an eight-point lead, and you put a poor foul shooter on the line. I like that. Curtis Jones, he's been around the block. He played for Tom Crean at Indiana. And watch. Now, the enemy has got to run back to the lane, and he's just waiting to block it. He's not going to block that shot. Curtis Jones has got too much uh, flavor in his game. <laughs> he's made that play a, a million times. I like that word. Well, McNeese had hit both his free throws tonight, but is short with that one. He came in just as a 35% foul shooter. If you're playing the odds, it means he's going to mix, miss this one. Well, they've missed Jamani McNeese as an anchor to that defense. Got it to fall. Yep, three for four tonight. Well, it's a seven point lead for Oklahoma State. They led by as many as 19 in the first half, and they've never trailed in this game, and likely loses it on the baseline to Kalixti. I think Kalixti can, can, he can look for his three a little bit. He shot that ball at a high rate. They've got a mismatch inside, but they shouldn't force it. That's Dezagwa on McNeese. Doolittle kind of looking to get it to. McNeese, but that's well defended. But James cut right. towards the bucket, and then there's going to be goaltending, count the basket, and the foul. I don't think that ball was going to crawl over the rim, so it's fortunate for OU that they got the goaltending. I ball. agree with you. That ball was going to be short. So OU takes advantage. Watch the drive now. He dumps it inside. The foul, and then uh, that ball's probably not going to go in. McGriff. Little too anxious. Games will have an update on Victor Oladipo's knee injury. And new number one Tennessee trying to avenge some history as they face Vandy in Nashville tonight. Sports Center, 1 a.m. Eastern, 10 Pacific on ESPN, as well as the ESPN app. Pistol Pete, his team is led throughout tonight. Led by as many as 19 in the first half. 
I'm surprised he wasn't at the walk-on tryouts. <laughs> Maybe he was. That big head, he could play defense <laughs> in the post. James completes the three-point play. Oh, no pistol peak could shoot it, right? That's one thing. Oh, touche. Yep. James was held scoreless in the first half, so he picks up his first three points of the night. It looks like Kalixi's going to hound Wendy Waters right now. Jones off the bark with his three. I think Aaron Kalixi's played really well this year. The main transfer. That's going to count. That's going to be another goaltending. Now you can't do that, young guy. So count the bucket for McNeese. Kalixi looked like he lost his balance down low. I think he did. And he gets rid of it before he travels. And then the young guy, we know he can block shots, but got to be a little more judicious than this. Might get away with that in AAU ball, but. How many times do you see back-to-back -back goaltendings on back-to-back -back possessions? Not very often. Not often. Well, we saw it there. The free throw miss keeps it a two-point two game. And this is as close as Oklahoma has gotten it's the early stages and also at one point early in the second half. No matter, no matter what happens, you've got to make Lindy Waters drive. Trap him in the corner. Yep. And his pass is picked off by Christian Doolittle. You got the freshman and the two graduate transfers out there. The enemy driving high oh, off the glass. How good is that? What how, a play by the freshman. How good is that? And how about the poise? We've watched them come through here at Oklahoma. An Buddy. unintentional elbow from Dezogwa to the chin of the enemy. But how about the play he made at the other end? Watch this. Freshman out of Houston. Smooth to the rim. Here at Iowa State. Got the enemy likely playing here tonight. There's uh in addition to those, you got uh, the enemy playing well tonight. Hasn't missed a shot. But Jared Butler down at Baylor, what he's done since uh, Tristan Clark's injury. Jared Butler's helped turn that Bears season around. The freshman from Louisiana. He's been absolutely outstanding. A little ISO right there. Good defense. Oklahoma on an 8-0 run has tied the game and a miss by Lindy Waters. The Sooners have never led. We're midway through the second half. And here's OU with a chance to take their first lead of the night. Do a little looking for McNeese, but Ane had him well defended. And yeah, McGriff took away that right hand of Doolittle. He loves to drive right. 14 footer McNeese going after his own rebound fouls Ane. <laughs> I think there was a lot of contact there. He definitely didn't go over his back, but uh, good job by the freshman of procuring that rebound. I think Juan Kruger was wondering a little bit too, but a well officiated game tonight. Officiating this season, at least in my opinion, has been outstanding. Very good. I haven't mentioned the officials for like five or six games. And that's the way they like it. They like it. They like to be incognito. McGriff hands off. Make him a driver. They do that. Waters leans in. There you and go. On. All right. Now you got to adjust. I like it. Terrific job by Lindy Waters. They take away the three. So he's a good player. He's done this before. Good concentration. There's the bump. And uh, what a night he's having. Really good effort tonight by Mike Boynton's juniors. They've lost three guys from that roster due to suspensions permanently. Right back. Make it a one-point game. Remember, Jamani McNeese is a five-year guy. And they really missed his offense and defense during that stretch where he had to rest that ankle. Oh boy. Waters off the mark with that three. 
does have 20 points tonight which is a career high his previous high was 19 against Texas earlier this month watch McGriff he's probably gonna sit on the right hand of Doolittle McNeese spilling his way in and the Oklahoma Sooners have taken their first lead of the night. And Lon Kruger wanted a foul, and I don't blame him because you go inside like that, and you, you need to be rewarded when there's contact. Waters trying to spin away from Kalixti. His pass is picked off. Doolittle. James. Doolittle to the corner for Kalixti. Has to save the wild pass. And then the enemy trying to save it. It goes to DeZogwin the other way. The reverse lay in for Jones. What a play by Curtis Jones. And it wasn't the finish, it was the beginning. He saved that ball from going out of bounds. And he found out, oh, it's awesome. What hustle by the transfer. Well, what a sequence here, Fran. Take a look. Curtis Jones comes out of nowhere to save it. And then he gets rewarded on the other end. Oh, that's good. Looking forward to that on Saturday. Got Kansas, Kentucky really is the marquee game, but how about Iowa State, Ole Miss? You got Tennessee playing West Virginia as the number one team. Yeah, those three matchups. I think the SEC will be favored in all those matchups. I think there's more depth in the Big 12 at the bottom. But right off the bat, I'm looking at those three games and thinking the SEC could get off to a good start. Well, Oklahoma had just taken the lead, and then that crazy sequence... He's given Oklahoma State back the lead on the Jones delivery, and now a miss from the right side by the Sooners. And they let the traffic waters. go by. He almost got that shot off. McNeese comes out on Waters. He's got to come out more. Four to shoot. Jones along three. Did not hit iron. The shot clock expires as it goes out of bounds. Sooner ball. Thanks. Manic, that is, is going to check in for McNeese. It's been a pretty good night for Brady Manic. 15 points. Knocking down some threes. He's grown up this year. He's gotten tougher. He's an excellent rebounder. Good hands. The grip. Yeah. Knocked it free. He sure did. The Lixty almost went flying there. He didn't sell it enough. No. <laughs> well, Oklahoma's switching, and they, they almost switched themselves into trouble. There was a little confusion. Anay tried to bounce it to Dezagua, who cut in the other direction, so Waters had to go to the court, and it's tied up. Possession arrow coming into play, gives it to Oklahoma. That's one of those plays where Waters, it's hard for him, for the official to hear him or for him to verbally signal it. And that's where one of his teammates has got to just look at the first official they see and say, timeout, and they get that possession. And they've got two left. And that's one of those plays with six minutes to go. That would be worth a timeout to get that possession back, in my opinion. The enemy. That's great. Wow. That, that is a hard move. And that's a freshman. Yeah, absolutely. And he almost created another turnover right there. I'm not going to say anything about his NBA potential, because then it'll be <laughs> on Twitter. But he's going to be a really good college player. He's a good player, and, he, and he's a no-mistake guy, which is why they really love him. No mistakes in terms of being in the right place on both ends of the floor. There's a drive. Jones, Sweet. nice adjustment by Curtis Jones. Really well done. Good body control. Well, we're going to have a game that looks like it's going down to the wire. Why not? They've been playing Bedlam basketball since 1908. This is the 238th installment of it. Doolittle. James a three. Odoms almost went over the top of a nay, and it's an Oklahoma State rebound. 
I thought Doolittle should have shot that ball in the lane. Yeah. And I thought, uh, who was it that went over the back? Good job of um, Odoms. Odoms and Richard Odoms. Yeah, he, yeah. Pull, he pulled back. Smart play. Wasn't going to get it. Waters driving. Picked up. Doolittle falling down. Fouled by Waters. That's going to be number four on Lindy Waters. It's, a, it's the right call because that's the call that's been made all season. Was it inadvertent? It was, but when you put an offensive player in a bad way, you have to call this. It's a great drive by Waters, and watch him come out of nowhere and try to come up with this. He tries to steal it, pokes it free, but right there, he takes the offensive player down, and it's a that, foul. that's just not anything other than a yeah. foul. Fans don't like it here, but why not? It's Bedlam. But as you alluded to, being that it was inadvertent, still, it's still it's, a foul. It's still a foul, exactly. So it puts Waters on the bench with four, with four and a half minutes to go. Be enemy. Odoms likes to get into the lane with the left. That's a foul. Spinning up and under. Got it. What a nice move by Richard Odoms. Yeah, and, and I, you know what? I, as long as it's both ways, these officials have done a good job, but there's a lot of body contact there. Dezagua can't respond with a three. Be enemy the rebound. Oklahoma with the ball and a one-point lead. For me, I want freedom of movement both ends. But hey, it's a hard game. Odom's nice. cutting towards the bucket, runs into an A. We come to a timeout. 3.58 to go in this Bedlam matchup. A one-point game, don't go anywhere. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66, proud sponsor of Big 12 basketball, and Mazda, feel alive. Oh, this good. Tight one here in Stillwater, one point lead for OU. We saw the freshman be enemy on that last sequence, Fran. You say he makes no mistakes. He made a really heady play on that last play. Exactly. This is what we mean when we say Juan Kruger trusts this guy. He tries to go to the basket. He doesn't. Watch him get cut off right here. He's in no man's land, okay? He's looking at Odoms. He realizes that he's got time. He waves Odom to go back door, and Odoms, guess what? He's going to go to the line and shoot two free throws. That's what I mean when I say that he's a no mistake guy. It's not the, it's not the points. It's the poise. It is a career high 12 points, starting his second consecutive game, and good luck getting him out of the lineup. I it think looks, that's going to be a permanent thing. It looks that way. Odom's the second. He hits one of two. Sooners go up by two, under four minutes to go. Now, this is a good chance, good opportunity to ISO Cam McGriff somewhere with some space to drive. Waters back on the floor playing with four fouls. Seven to shoot. Put up off the glass. Missed by McGriff. Now they got to touch McGriff, but it was pretty well defended. Yep. Long Kruger right now orchestrating. Odoms oh, backing down to Zagwa. He's good in there. Going after his own rebound, fighting for it with McGriff loose. The enemy of three. Wow. Good. Wow. Wow. Another star is born in Norman. Wow. Poise. He hasn't missed a shot tonight. We've seen dribs and drabs of this kind of play all year. And then Juan Kruger has stuck him in the starting lineup. Sooners up five, their largest lead. They have not had many leads tonight. Jones trying to respond. A tough shot from 17. Doesn't draw iron. He forced that. It goes out of bounds. Mark, you remember when Oklahoma State was uh, down 19? I said they could come back. But watch this. Missed shot. Great hustle both ways. And then watch the smooth jumper. Rhythm shot. Boom. Now, Oklahoma was down 19 at one point in the first half. Yeah, the problem was it was too early in the game 
for them to be able to sustain. A lot of dribbling, do little hands off. Manic three, short. Rebounded off the floor. Excellent. An A. Excellent defense by an A. That's the bread and butter for Doolittle, the ISO. He's won two games from that spot this year. Big possession for the Pokes. McGriff three in and out. James Skyen for the rebound for the Sooners. Now, if you're Oklahoma, use some clock. Timeout. Oklahoma with a minute 53 to go. They're up by five. Well, what a night for true freshman Jamal B. Enemy. Out of Houston, Texas. Well known down there. You may know his uncle, Eric B. Enemy, the offensive coordinator of the Kansas City Chiefs, future head coach. But tonight it's about another B. Enemy, the freshman. And here's a big one right here. Boys, new shot clock. Said, hey, I can make this. He almost stole that game down in Austin on Saturday night. And that's what you love about him. Now look, he's 6'4". He can play both guard spots. The most impressive thing about this kid is not his talent right now. It's the, uh, it's the poise with which he plays this game. On a team that's the most experienced team in power conference basketball, Oklahoma, he is the only freshman and uh, it's a good spot for him to be in because he's got older brothers who've taught him how to play the games halfway through his career as a freshman. Going to the bucket, James. Well designed out of the timeout for the Sooners. They're on an 8-0 run. Watch the three ball. Be good strategy if they can get a couple threes up. Pokes need a bucket. Yep. Waters a hair long. On the baseline, it's out of bounds. It will remain with the Pokes. Cowboys have played their hearts out tonight. Obviously shorthanded. Only eight scholarship players, only nine total players on the roster for OSU. Got a terrific recruiting class coming in. I met the, the twins from Tulsa Tol Memorial tonight. These juniors will be back. You see that scoreless drought for the Pokes that continues. Got to think about fouling right now if you're if you're Oklahoma State. It's a three possession game with a minute to go. Four to shoot. The enemy finds James in the corner. A foul. Odoms got a piece of Curtis Jones. And that's not a smart play and a good break for Oklahoma State to score. The clock stopped. Number nine, Kansas, is going to battle number eight, Kentucky at Rupp Arena in the sixth annual SEC Big 12 Challenge. Also a Sonic Blockbuster. Saturday, 6 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. The SEC Big 12 Challenge. It's presented by Continental. Hey, listen, a week ago, Oklahoma was ranked in the top 25. They had a great non-conference season, and they slumped last year. It's almost, uh, it's almost like it was starting to be deja vu, so this would be a big win in a place they lost last year. Saved in the backcourt by McGriff. Oklahoma State badly needing a bucket. Jones sealed off his pass, stolen by the enemy. And he has fouled to stop it with 26 seconds left. Oh, man, what a night. One of the things, I, I'm spoiled, and you are too. What I love about the Big 12 is every year there's somebody else that pops up that he, he was highly recruited. There's no question about that, especially in the state of Texas and this region. But so much fun to see guys like him come into the league. And, you know, sooner or later he'll be gone and just... Give, give Juan Kruger credit. It's really interesting, Mark, when I watched them practice in the fall and I noticed he was the only freshman, Juan Kruger told me, he said, one of the great things about this, there's no pressure on him. Every guy on the roster is a veteran. The two graduate transfers, the four seniors that are coming back, and these guys have really helped him grow up. The enemy in 34 minutes tonight has 
zero turnovers. Well, that means he's got, he's, that's 94 minutes. Because he came into the night without a turnover in 60. To Zagwa, a long drought. Oklahoma State hasn't scored in well over five minutes. And that's going to do it. They led by as many as 19 at one point did Oklahoma State. But OU ends the game on a 10-0 run, and they win it by nine, 70 to 61 over Oklahoma State. Cowboys came out on fire, and uh, this place, Galaga Ivor, was rocking and rolling. But there was a lot of time left, as you know. We talked about that in the first half, and this is a veteran Oklahoma team. It's a together team. 